A lot of people still don't know about the true first season of Yu-Gi-Oh, and much less have seen it, but not because it isn't any good, it's just a bit different from its more popular sequel. Kaiba has green hair, Yugi's alter ego isn't exactly a good guy, and much less attention is given to the so-called children's card game we all know and love. For most people, the latter is enough to check out. No card game? But Yu-Gi-Oh is a card game, right? Well, Yu-Gi-Oh 1998, more commonly referred to as Season Zero, is the prequel to Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters. And while it does feature the same Duel Monsters card game, it certainly is a lot less prevalent. In typical shonen fashion, the original goal of Yu-Gi-Oh was to depict the power of friendship. More specifically, the power to make friends through the act of playing games. Which is quite funny considering most people think of Season Zero as the darkest part of Yu-Gi-Oh. Which isn't completely inaccurate, but more on that later. First, I need to tell you that the anime and manga versions of Season Zero are quite a bit different. There aren't any major plot differences between the two, but when Toei adapted the manga, they made a lot of changes in an attempt to improve the mainstream appeal. The most conspicuous example of this is Miho. In the anime, she is a main character, but she only appeared in one chapter of the manga. For this video, I'll be discussing a bit of the manga, but mostly the anime, because it's the more interesting version in my opinion. And one last thing before we continue, I'm going to ask that you leave a like on this video and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos like this one. I'm going to be reviewing each of the different Yu-Gi-Oh! series on this channel, so subscribe if you want to see that. Season 0 of Yu-Gi-Oh! is all about acquiring friendship through games, and it's one thing that Season 0 does better than most anime, even those that have friendship as a central theme. We've all seen the shonen where friendship is used as a driving force to push the protagonist to get stronger, and then the friends of that protagonist get stronger so they can feel like less of a burden. But how often is it that the main character's reward for having friends is simply having friends? No increase in magical power or mental fortitude, just friendship. Friends who don't take a back seat to the main character, but instead who are strong in their own right. To illustrate this point, we need to look at Yugi's relationships with Jonochi and Anzu. First we have Jinochi, who teases Yugi every chance he gets, and Yugi just kinda puts up with it. Jinochi claims his goal is to make Yugi into a man by provoking him, but Yugi never fights back. And despite being picked on all the time, Yugi still views Jinochi as a friend because he believes Jinochi's heart is in the right place. Anzu is Yugi's childhood friend who he has a crush on, but Anzu views him as more of a little brother than anything else. This becomes clear when Jinochi takes his puzzle and it falls on a visibly frustrated Anzu to get it back for him. After she returns the puzzle to Yugi, she tells him that he needs to learn to stand up for himself. At the end of that same episode, Yugi completes his puzzle, unlocks the power of the Shadow Game, and from that point onward, things are changed completely. On the surface, Jinochi really does act like a jerk, and he certainly fits the delinquent character archetype, but he's not a bully. In fact, when Anzu referred to Jinochi as a bully earlier in the same episode, he was actually offended by it. This becomes especially obvious when he is faced with Ushio, a real bully. And of course, after Yugi steps in and saves Jinochi, he does end up becoming a good friend of his. Honda as well. As for Yugi's relationship with Anzu, she starts to develop romantic feelings for him after he rescues her in the next episode. But these are just the first steps Yugi takes toward improving his pre-existing relationships and establishing new ones. With each new episode, each new game, the evolution of these relationships becomes more and more apparent. It's thanks to all these games that Season Zero makes for such a good episodic series, and the strengthening of each bond is what makes it worth watching from beginning to end. It's something that honestly, I haven't seen done well since Cowboy Biba. That's right. I know it's strange to compare a children's show about friendship with a masterpiece like Cowboy Bebop, but hear me out. One of my favorite things about Cowboy Bebop is the episodic feel that allows you to watch almost any episode out of context without feeling lost or out of place. This works because a new story is contained entirely within each episode of the show. At the same time, you'll be rewarded with a set of new stories that develop in the background if you watch the series in its proper order. Yu-Gi-Oh! 1998 does the exact same thing. The first arc shows Yugi's path from loner to leader, and each of Yugi's friends go through their own struggles as a result of this change. It's the only other series I can think of where most of the episodes can be watched out of context even though there is an actual overarching plot being built up in the background. And not just one plot, there are several different storylines being developed for multiple characters. It all comes to a head at the end of the Kaiba Land battle, where Yugi gets his rematch against Kaiba and completely obliterates him with Exodia. One thing I didn't notice until I watched Season Zero was that Exodia is made of five different pieces because Yugi's friend group consists of five different people. And each of these people were lost in a way until they all came together and developed a strong bond with one another. This is why Kaiba gets completely destroyed in spite of having 
three of the strongest card in the world and he being the only person to have those three cards. Kaiba's a complete loner and he actually betrays both his father and his younger brother within the same arc. In his pursuit of strength, he decides to abandon and betray those who are close to him, while Yugi, on the other hand, becomes stronger as a side effect of developing these strong bonds with his friends. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Yu-Gi-Oh! 1998 is dark for a Yu-Gi-Oh! series, but to be honest, not by much, as the anime for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters was dark in a very similar way, because Yugi finds himself in extreme danger all the time in both Season 0 and Duel Monsters. The key difference that sets Season 0 apart as especially dark is the fact that Yugi is almost always the one responsible for creating these extreme circumstances, the complete opposite of Duel Monsters. And even this is one thing that Season 0 does impeccably well. In Season 0, the power of the Shadow Game is unlocked when Yugi solves the Millennium Puzzle. For most of the season, he uses this power to punish people for cheating in games, and he does so very severely. But by the end of the Kaiba Land arc, when Yugi is faced with his greatest foe, also the biggest cheater of the entire series, what does he do? Hmm, does he force Kaiba to retire from gaming permanently? Maybe trap him in an endless nightmare? No, in fact, Yugi doesn't punish him at all. And this is huge for Yugi as it marks a major turning point for him as a character. To explain, we'll need to take a step back to Yugi's Kapumon battle with Mokuba just prior. Upon Mokuba's defeat, it is Kaiba who initiates a punishment, not Yugi. This comes as a shock to Yugi, so he rescues Mokuba. Then, Mokuba tells Yugi the story of his relationship with his older brother and how Kaiba himself is a victim of his adopted father. In a way, it humanizes Kaiba, and that is why he can't bring himself to use his shadow game power to ruin him, even though he has every reason to. Think about how much restraint this took. Leading up to this fight, Kaiba stole the blue eyes from Yugi and tore it up, kidnapped his grandpa, and forced his friends into several life-threatening situations. Not one of these actions were excusable. But Yugi still found it in his heart to forgive Kaiba and gave him a chance at redemption. Yugi realized that his opponents aren't just dirty cheaters. They're people who have made mistakes. Kaiba may have done some very bad things in the pursuit of victory, but up until the Mokuba rematch, Yugi was very cruel in his own pursuit of justice. That's why Yugi spares Kaiba and offers him a chance at redemption. He is also attempting to redeem his own actions. So, is Season 0 really that dark? I'd say no, it's not a particularly dark series. At least not in the anime version. In the manga, people are actually killed by Yugi and even though most of them are technically bad people, that doesn't make it right. And if you enjoyed this video, go watch Season 0. There is a fan dub being made by Team Millennium, so now you can even watch it in English. Check the description of this video for a link to that. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more. I'll be covering the rest of the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise very soon. Consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content and thanks for watching.